Hi. Hi guys. Hey guys. Welcome back to your Welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> oh yeah. What do you do? Alright, let's not do too much. I have to edit too much. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hello, future architects. Welcome back to Architecture 101. So today I have a very special guest. Domino's my... Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Domino's, Domino's Pizza. <laughs> and with a side of Fatima. Um, she was my study buddy when I did my registration, and she is also now a registered architect. Hello, Mrs. Architect. Hi, Mr. Architect. Please don't put that in. <laughs> yes, this is definitely going in there. Oh, good. Um, yeah. So, some of you might be doing the registration in what, five days? Yes. Five days. Five days. August 20th. Stressful times. Good luck. <laughs> I hope you're studying very yeah. hard. I yeah. hope you're not working. Like studying. us, we're in the office. Hi. Yep. What time? Is late night working. Too late. So we thought we'd take the opportunity to talk about our own experiences, how we found the um, registration, and any tips, pointers, and past questions that you might find useful. And yeah. we're also going to eat pizza while we're doing it because yes. we're time poor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, nobody got time to do this separately. Cheers. Cheers. <coughs> yeah. So first question. Mm -hmm. What were we doing five days before the exam? Do you remember? We took four days off of work. Yeah. No, yeah. it was five days. Mm -hmm. Oh no, four days. Four days. Five days in total, four days before the exam. We took Friday off. Yeah. We Saturday. had Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday and then Tuesday was the exam. Exactly. Like so, don't call in sick tomorrow, don't go to work. Yeah. <laughs> But it was so useful. It was so good that we actually had those four days. It and was we were really just like good, yeah. all out studying. How many hours was it? Was four times 24? You lose track. Yeah. But Pretty much spent every day in the library. Every day, every moment, every hour. Mm -hmm. Like just in the library, studying, going through notes, rereading notes, you know, going through past questions. Um, because you might have studied it a year ago, but you definitely don't remember it, like what chapter one was. Yeah. So you just have to go through all the acumen notes from start to finish and if you did PALS you basically just go through from you know module 1 down to module 15 um, and read through everything again because you really need that refresher and I can probably like guarantee that most things no matter how obscure <laughs> is you could possibly be tested mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. When we did our test some of the questions are like was that even in the notes? <laughs> It wasn't. What the hell are they asking? It's like, yeah. what is the first, what is it? First, we'll go, with the, go through this in a second. Yeah. It was the first point of, no. Ah, oh, first instance. First instance. What's the first instance? If anyone can tell me what first instance means. Yeah, right I below was, in the comments. Yeah, right below in comments, <laughs> I will send you maybe some money. We'll maybe. send you pizza. Yes, free Domino's pizza. Mm. So, yeah, definitely. I think what I found the best was just reading through my notes again, just to refresh my memory on everything. Because mm -hmm. as you said as well, like you just forget, you get, you just forget all the things you've studied because you've read through so much and you studied through so much. So you have to keep reading. Mm -hmm. Don't stop reading. Don't stop reading. Rereading. Look for more resources. So a lot of it has to do with legal terms and you know googling what um, liquidated damages actually gives you a, a much better much better explanation than what's in the acumen notes because liquidated damages is a legal term and lawyers you know love explaining things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at length um so what do you think was um the most difficult part of the acumen notes which topic did you really struggle with yeah. and how did you overcome it it's been too long i don't even know <laughs> i think the hardest part was the contracts for sure because that's where you really get into the nitty gritty of really trying to understand what goes into the contracts and understanding like, you remember how I studied. Mm -hmm. I would go through every single line, every single word, if or a but or an or, and I would be like, Eddie, what does this mean? What if this was an and? What if this happened? What if that happened? And I had to just see it. I felt like that was the hardest, but also the best part of learning as well. Like. Once you master the contract part, for me at least, mm. you're you're good to go. Yeah. So definitely that was part of it. And like what you said as well with Googling, like my favorite thing in the last class was just reading like case laws. So I would Google, you know, what would happen if, you know, blah, 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 this was the scenario. 
And then a case law similar would come up, I'll go through it and then understand, okay, these were the parts, you know, this was the situation. Mm-hmm. Or like even put yourself in their situation and say, what would you do? Well, who do you think is liable? And then see the results of the case court, I mean, the court case. Yeah. Um, when I was studying for the contracts, I, I think I, I struggled just as much as you did. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found it really difficult to understand the provisions of the contract by reading the acumen notes. Um, don't get me wrong, the acumen notes do a good job of explaining um, what happens, mm-hmm. but you really need to read through the actual contract to actually, it, it really breaks it down in terms of the steps you have to take when a progress claim comes through, when um, there is a variation and like which steps to follow. And once you read through it the first time, you actually, you will, you will actually get it. So read through it once or twice or three times. I think the biggest part is um, the understanding the difference between simple works, ABIC simple works and mm-hmm. ABIC um, major works. And what I did was basically I just read through simple works and then I read through um, major works and highlighted every clause or every line that was even slightly different to simple works. Mm-hmm. So then you get a good comparison of where the differences are because most of it is the same. Yeah. But and this doesn't questions. guarantee that it's actually going to be in the exam because we did not have a single question about... Actually, there was one question about practical completion, Yeah. but there was, was not there was no mention of SW, MW, none of that. So again, like whatever you read, you never know what's what, which part of it is going to come in the exam, which part's going to be handy. Yeah, so focus on the logic. Yeah, understand. The logic, the memorizing. principles, yeah. yeah. Not memorizing the terms. Mm-hmm. Make sure you understand the logic principles. Oh, also try and get um, a filled out version of the ABIC contract mm. in any way you can from the office, steal it from somebody's desk, whatever. Because seeing one that's actually been filled out and executed, especially when term, when it comes to the schedules, will just demystify all of that yeah. for you. Yeah, because it's one thing to read about it, but it's another thing to actually see it in action and like what actually what forms part of it really. Yeah. yeah. I think that's good. Which other parts? Let's talk about the part I really struggled with. Which so one? tendering, <laughs> tendering process. So so much goes into it. I have never, like, sorry, registered examination people, but <laughs> <laughs> I've already passed. So you can't take my registration away. Really? I have. <laughs> I did not have much experience, aka never done it before, um, in tendering. <laughs> Traditional tendering, we do a lot of like requests for prices or quotes or whatever, but mm. to actually go through the formal tendering process is a very, very rare experience. So, unless you're in a very, very small office, and yeah, unless you're actually doing like houses and you get yeah. to tender out to builders, even that is rare these days. Like, they usually just go to a builder and say, Hey, give me a price for this. Yeah, so what I really had to do was. Again, go on Google um, and just just Google um, tendering process because the acumen notes were not clear enough. I just went um, tendering process and compared um, different resources for the tendering um, tendering process and then wrote it wrote step by step everything that you needed to do and every single document you had to prepare. And my notes, I think, just for that section was like ten pages. Yeah. Yeah. 20 pages there's a lot that goes into there was that. a lot and like yeah. when you have to do things when you have to be prepare things before tender what you have to issue during tender what you have to get back after tender there's a whole list so you need to actually go through all that if anything i think in our exam questions that part was an entire question yeah yeah the tender part. and in your interview they will ask you yes yeah. what steps did you take what steps yeah. Yeah. how would you run a tender so for me, my best tip, if you wanted to focus on, is to you know get familiar with the tendering process. And also, as well, same as the contracts, if you can find one that's filled out, the one you had as well, mm. that was really good because you can kind of understand, okay, what does it really contain and what's actually included. Yeah. So that was that was really good to see as well. It will help you bring yeah. home the bacon. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Okay. So after our grueling four days of studying, I'm pretty much like dead by the end of it. Let's talk about the actual exam. Mm. So, we're, sorry, this is like, oh, we're very hungry. I'm mm. sorry. Making it casual. Making it very casual. Yeah. Mokbang, you know mokbang? 
Yeah. This is like a Korean TV show where basically people just eat in front of the screen and chat. This is arch- oh, yeah. architecture mukbang. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> what does mukbang mean? Um, eat show. Yeah. Literally. Exactly. Mukbang. Pizza show? Pizza show. Pizza mukbang. Anyway, back to topic. So the actual exam, um, we were lucky enough to actually be allocated to the same room because Ma... Bahag- Don't say my last name. Ma, Ma, <laughs> Fata Ma. Mama, Mama, Mama. Yeah, Mama. Yeah, the other word Mama. Don't try and Google her. She has no social media. <laughs> um, so we basically just sat together um, and it was good. Next um, to each other. Next to each other, cheating off each other. Yeah. Yeah. I so wish was, you could. You are so stressed out and yeah, you're just staring yeah. at the screen. I was literally blocking my ears with the... Yeah, the um, ear. They give you these ear... What yeah, are they called? The earplugs. Earplugs. You have to put on earplugs. I didn't. I regretted it. <laughs> yeah, because you just want to be so focused and you're yeah. just trying to read this like massive scenario, not trying mm-hmm. to scare you, but you know. There's a lot. You need to okay. be focused, yeah. You know, talk, let's talk about the actual mm-hmm. structure. So when you take the exam, um, there are nine questions. Each one has... Wait, no. Mm-hmm. Nine scenarios. Mm-hmm. They're different. So there's nine scenarios, each with five different questions. And each scenario is completely different and they test you on a different, I guess, area of knowledge. Um, there's about one screen of um, story that you have to read through. Mm-hmm. Some questions are actually shorter. Yeah. But the catch is, after every single question, after you answer every question, they add more information to it. Yeah. It was so annoying. Yeah, because they're trying to make it tricky so you're not just yeah. answering that scenario. So they just go like, you know, this has happened. And then somehow they'll just jump into some, something completely unrelated. Yeah. And they're like, so what does the BCA say about, you know? <laughs> what is, uh, we'll talk what about was, the, what was actually tested in a second. Yeah. Um, but the yeah, format is interesting. The format was very confusing. You're stressed. You're trying to read that entire paragraph and digest it all. And once you do, you tackle the first question. And then after you do that, they're like, okay, so what if the circumstances were flipped 180? Mm. What happens then? And you're like, what, what, wait, what? So did they sign the contract? They didn't sign the contract? Was there a designer? Was there a planner? And it wasn't like the yeah. questions, yeah, you couldn't find the answers inside the question. You kind of had to guess some of them, which was really mm-hmm. annoying. Like you would read the scenario and you're like, I can't find the answer to this within the scenario. So you're just making, it was kind of a lot of it was assumption. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of hypothetical. So mm. the tip for that is focus on principle, focus on logic, make sure that you understand what is the underlying like sequence of decisions that you have to make as an architect, mm. and then you can apply it to any scenario. If you're just rote learning, if you're just you know um, reading through acumen notes and thinking that is that is all there is and there isn't yeah. because once you flip, change one part of the scenario one part of um, the acumen notes everything becomes different so how do you even study for this anyway. experience experience a lot of the questions were experience based yes that's true but still you're like um don't don't there cheat be parts. don't fake your logbook guys <laughs> it's not gonna help you experience. Yeah, like really, us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jump. But, oh, sorry, go on. No, I forgot what I was going to say. Jump on the really nasty, really complicated projects that no one wants to, no yeah. one wants to do. That's yeah. how you learn. That's how you learn. That's how we got it. That's how we did it. Because a lot of it... Um, Hi, was, builder that I work with. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, client that who shall not be named. <laughs> but a lot of it is just... Um, dealing with scenarios that are not by the book. If every single pro- one of the projects you've worked on is by the book, um, and everything went slowly, you would you would fail the exam because a lot of it is testing you on how you would react when things go wrong. Mm, mm. So you really exactly. you really want to jump on those projects that really you know have everything working against you, and then slowly work through it and learn to deal with these kind of you know, crazy scenarios and how do you yeah. actually execute it in a way that's responsible, legal, and with the least liability. Exactly. Don't make yourself yeah. liable. Any question that says get advice, give advice. No. No, we do not give advice. Yes, <laughs> we do not rely on anything. <laughs> we just eat pizza. Basically. Uh-huh. 
plan as well. I love plan as well. Mm-hmm. So, how did you approach actually answering the exam? What was your process? Okay. I know what my process was. I know what your process was, but you tell it. It's completely different. Okay. One thing that I was really focusing on from before the exam, and the only thing that I could be prepared for, was time management. How long did so, we have? I remember we had. 90 minutes. Was it? Yeah. It was an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Okay. I remember that we had the time of the exam, which is like let's say ninety minutes. Mm-hmm. We had seven scenarios, five questionnaires. Seven times five, thirty-five. Ninety divided by thirty-five was about like seven minutes and something. And one point about the exam to remember is this is your screen. At the top corner here, you have a timer, but it counts down. It doesn't count the other way. So don't get distracted because when I was doing my first question, I was like, oh my god, what does it say? Like thirty-nine minutes. <laughs> So make sure you I this is actually what I did because I was like if my brain doesn't get through this like I need to know the numbers I quickly jotted down every seven minutes minus So I was like 90. I don't know 83 blah 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 So I have the numbers in front of me and when it matches that number I move on to the next question So basically I allowed seven minutes per question Because the exam's not like before where you had the negative marking and you could just sort of get lucky with it You have to just answer as many as you can within the time that you have so yeah every seven minutes i would just go to the next one but i found the seven minutes to be okay for a question i didn't find even though you're reading the long scenarios there were not many questions that i was like oh my god i wish i had more time i left with yeah yeah. i had 10 minutes there was no time management you go okay mine was very time based (laughs) i had 10 minutes extra or five minutes left at the end where i kind of like tried to go through and i actually changed a few answers so maybe that helped me pass i don't know um and then, yeah, in terms of reading the scenarios, I remember before the exam, I had planned to read the questions first and then read the scenario because everyone was like, oh, there's questions that don't relate to it, blah, blah, blah. But once I was in the exam mode, I just read the scenario <laughs> and I was like, I need to know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, that's what everyone that said. That went out the window because yeah. I was like, oh my God, there's a tactics. massive paragraph in front of me, blah, blah, blah. I just yeah. can't. Yeah. Because I also don't let you read every single of the five questions yeah. um, straight away. You read, you get the scenario on the left and then you get your first question, you answer that, you move on to the you next You have to one. go like next, next, yeah. next, next. So it's not like you see it in front of you. So yeah. it makes it harder to, I don't know, I just felt like I would be wasting time if I started reading questions. You it felt a bit weird, yeah. You can't go back. Yeah, it, it felt really back. confusing. Another thing that we were told, or like there was a myth around, um, was that you get 10 minutes of reading time only where your pens have to be down. So I was like waiting for that reading time and then they're like, just start. And I was like, oh no, that pans out the window. <laughs> there ain't no reading time. No, it's just you go straight into it. So mm-hmm. I literally just went back to basics and I was like, read the scenario, understand as much as I can. There's no pen and paper. You can't jot down. Oh, was it? There was pen and paper. There was pen yeah, and paper. We'll talk so, about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, there was pen and paper. Um, so I was like, oh, I should take notes. And it's like, nope, that's not going to work. And yes, yeah, so I just time. went through the question. Yeah, so the, the pen and paper was interesting because you, you think that like people who took the exam before us gave us all of these tips mm. and they were all wrong. <laughs> they were all non-applicable. They were like, read the questions first, then do the scenario so you can pick out the information. Mm. No. Mm. Um, what was the other one? Um, take notes. Um, yeah. Write down the key points. You do not have time for that shit. You'll yeah. be freaking out if you're yeah. trying to take notes and everyone's just answering questions. Yeah. It's too hot and it's not so, worth it. What we ended up doing, I think we both ended up doing the same thing, was um, we went through each question and then we wrote down the ones we were not confident on. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. we were like 9.1, no. Yeah. <laughs> 9. I put, two. Yeah. I even put like, I, I answered A, but I think you might be C. Yeah. So then when I went back, let's say somehow a miraculous something happened and I was like, oh, I know the answer now. I kind of know which options I was looking at. So yeah. that was actually good. That was, that was really good. Plus the fact that that actually came from me forcing Eddie to try and do a fake exam before. Do yeah, you I think, yeah, we did. We did simulate That's another thing you guys should yeah. do for sure. Yeah. We did realize that it was impossible to take notes. You yes. just don't have time. That's, yeah. So don't, yeah. don't let the exam be the first time you're putting yourself in that situation. Mm-hmm. We actually said, I think the 90 minutes or whatever it was, yeah. um, selected enough questions from the... <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what that is. What is that? Um, and then we were like, put ourselves on the timer and then we're like, go. Yeah. And we went through it and then we checked our answers based on whatever we understood mm. um, to see if we're right or wrong. 
And I think that's when we kind of picked up the strategy that you can't take notes and it's good to kind of write down your answers of what could be right and what could be wrong. Yeah. So I think that was a good point. Yeah. Try doing, putting yourself a few times in the exam situation before you go yeah. in. And it makes you, well, slightly less nervous. Yeah, because you're like, okay, I kind of have done this before. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, my approach was not as... Not as um, orderly. There was no time management. I did not <laughs> time it down to the you know seven minute this is mark. The problem in our industry. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> so what I did was um, as soon as I opened the first question, I was like, my strategy is to get through it as fast as I can, mm -hmm. everything all in one go, while taking notes of which questions I was not confident in, and then just get through like. Put an answer down for everything. You don't have to submit it straight away. You just put your answer down. Mm -hmm. And then I think I managed to get through all of the questions in about 30 minutes or a third of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or maybe a bit more than that. So then I was like, okay, so now I have time to then go through a second round and then pick out the ones that I actually struggled with and give it a bit more thought. Because in the first round, I've already eliminated the obviously wrong ones. So now I just have to choose the ones that are equally mm -hmm. as right. Okay. And then I did that another round, and I think the first round maybe I answered twenty five percent of them confidently. Mm -hmm. And then the second round, I think I was down to about thirty percent that I was not confident in. And then the final round is where I sat down. And I was like, okay, look, what do you actually know is wrong? So it's like you can't do this, therefore A is wrong. You can't do this logically, therefore B is wrong. So therefore the, the, the final answer has to be C. So it's like when you have no other direction, go back to logic, process of elimination, go through each line in the scenario, what you know, what, um, what the logic is, and just slowly eliminate the possibilities. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of answers that were very similar. Uh, yeah. A lot of answers that were very confusing. A lot of answers were really long as well. So by the time you tried to like pull them apart and see like what the differences are, literally it was like that. What's that game? The one that's like tell the difference between A and B. Yeah, just picking hands. It was crazy. Yeah. So, and then I don't know. Just like one of the last questions I remember that was the one with the DNC contract for the mm. warehouse or something. That was just like, <laughs> if I don't get this, I don't mind. <laughs> it was very complicated. So. There are some that's just you need to yeah. throw it away. You but it we never away. know how this round's gonna be yeah. and every time like we've spoken to someone who's done the exam before, their advice has been suited to the exam they sat and I feel like they change it a lot every time. Yeah. They do um, say that um they have different people writing the questions every year because they can't find people to write questions. <laughs> so variety. Career choice. Option. Career choice. Anyone wanna, you know, write questions for them? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so finally, this is the part I think everyone's waiting for. Mm. What was in the exam? Ah, okay. Do you I even was, remember? I think I remember bits and pieces. Yeah. So the general gist, I'll go through I'll go through the ones I remember. So there was a question on an office building yeah. about the door. Um, that was an office refurbishment, and that was mostly to do with... Are we allowed to share the questions? Yeah. Wasn't there a thing about not sharing the questions? We can't write about it. This is memory. This we is we could be it. completely wrong. Yeah. Just so you know, we did this. Don't like rely on disclaimer. <laughs> there will be a disclaimer yeah. right here. Yeah, we did this like six months ago, so like yeah. we forgot it every like thirty seconds after. Yeah. So this is very vague. This is just you know what remnants we still remember. Um, but I remember there was a question on office fit out. Mm -hmm. That was mostly to do with the late stage completion and um, the practical completion and defects. Mm -hmm. um, there was one question that was the entire question was on hiring. Uh, it was on hiring interns. So if you haven't all studied, about oh yeah, you should yeah. say that. Well, if you haven't yeah. studied employment law because it's not in the acumen notes, jump onto Fair Work mm -hmm. and study mm -hmm. tonight. You need to know it because I am not kidding. They can they can ask you any question and there was an entire question of not like five yeah, like employment in scenario yeah on an employment and I think I remember that the most because that was still, that just came out of nowhere so the question and you're good at it yeah I'm good at it full marks so the, yeah. yeah so the question was basically um, um, a student comes in asking for an unpaid internship what do you do what are her rights how can you hire her um, can she be a casual, part-time, full-time? So this is the kind of stuff that you need to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. 
Um, there was a question, obviously, on the DNC contract. So yeah. there were no questions on ABIG, but there was an entire scenario dedicated on to DNC contracts. So a lot of no, was it just that one that was DNC? It was just that one. Oh, okay, yeah. It was just that one. But like actually yeah. asking you what the the difference is between well, why you should select a DNC contract compared yeah. to a traditional contract. Yeah, exactly. And how to actually. Yeah. yeah. What I remember from, I remember when I was in the exam, this is how I was thinking, that the question was about something like a Bunnings. So imagine they were going to build a the Bunnings, bunnings yeah. in every state. And if they were Amazon architect who's designing all these Bunnings. So what is the best way of going about this design process and sort of getting going into a DNC contract that's going to benefit the most in terms of costs and variations mm. and all of that mm. stuff? So it was just something consistency very... Consistency in design. Yeah, consistency in design. So yeah. it's like, you know, we have... A, and there was all these questions about columns and stuff. Like, mm. the, there's a site that you, they can't fit the columns the same way as the other place. What do you do? Mm. Or what's the best way of approaching it? Or was that part of the question that just no, didn't no, relate to anything no, it else? Was, it was like to maintain the, the original grid, what do you instruct the structural yeah. engineer to do? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, something yeah. like that. And it's just you, I don't know, that was not what I was expecting in the exam. Yeah, let's just talk about this one. I think we remember this the clearest because it was the last one. Yeah. Um, and then there was a question on a structural defect in the slab and whose responsibility it was. So was what, it? whether, yeah, it was whether the, it was the structural engineer or whether it was um, the architect's responsibility. Was that a different question? I can't remember. I, don't know. I think that was a roof collapsing one. Oh, that was a roof collapsing yeah. one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Backtrack. We'll, we'll talk about that. But later. yeah, if you learn anything about DNC, make sure you cover it as well, right. because they say in in the PALS classes, they don't I talk love PALS, it. but you know, <laughs> they would not talk about DNC. Yeah. Everyone was asking about DNC. They were so focused on ABIC, but there was no ABIC in this exam. There was yeah. not. I remember I came out of the exam and I looked at Eddie. I was like, there was no one SW or MW word in our exam. <laughs> I could have saved two weeks of studying. Fact check, the AIA, the Australian Institute of Architects, does not write the exam. <laughs> Different people. Probably why. That's probably why. So don't take yeah. the you know, don't take the teachings as, as law. They're just as lost as we are. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. Um, what else do you remember? So structural yeah, the, the structural engineer one, that was interesting. So mm. that scenario was where they were building, I think it was a ten story um, apartment building or something mm. and then the structural oh yeah so the original the original scenario this is where it gets tricky right the original scenario um the architect was a consultant for the client and the client separately engaged a structural engineer mm. then the scenario was the the roof fell down and they found that it was a structural defect and it injured someone or something and so, yeah. injured somebody mm. this was the one that we all wanted to die yeah um so the first question was okay in the scenario where the structural engineer is a secondary consultant who is in the, the first, first instance, in the first instance who is um liable that's question number one yeah question number two if the structural engineer was your sub consultant in the first instance, who is liable? So there was all these questions about the first, like every question started with first, it says like probably mm. four of them. Yeah. And basically how, what we were thinking in the exam is like, what do you mean first instance? So like, for example, the architect is always liable, you know, the client always has to be paying for it, or mm. there was something else. Who gets sued as well. first? Yeah. In, it's like in the know. first instance, who has to pay for this? Yeah. And you know, in the, like you're thinking, okay, that means maybe the client has to originally yeah. pay out, and then someone else will come in and sort of, what was the word? Re reimburse. Reimburse them for it. Yeah, subrogate, my <laughs> favorite word. Um, so it was just really confusing. Yeah. And they kept saying in PALS to like, only focus on what the question is asking, don't get distracted. But we weren't un even understanding what the question was. We didn't even know what they were talking about. That was, I was just going by luck, that one as well. I was just like, okay, Something like there were guess. two options that you just knew, okay, this doesn't make sense. But for example, it's in between, it was between structure or architect or client or architect, and you're just like, okay, it's one of these. It's, what did I get for that one? I think I got was four out of five. Three out of five, whatever. Yeah. Mm, three out of five. I think I got lucky. Yeah. So. Mm. And then, yeah, that, that question just broke my head. Mm. That was only the, the middle of the exam. That was the first question. It's not the first question. That's why everyone freaked out. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> okay, so how many have we done? One, two, three. Three, so three out of seven. Nine. I don't know. 
There's nine seven scenarios. scenarios so I have questions. There's nine? nine scenarios. All right, so take out the part that I said seven. <laughs> <laughs> so there was one that was office fit out, and I think the most memorable one. Oh, I remember. There's office fit out, and then there was the school. We'll talk about the school. Ah, yes, that's cool. So the office fit out was pretty standard, so they were running a a big contract, we assume. Um, Then they got to completion, practical completion, and then one of the questions was, um, which item that's incomplete would mean that it had not reached practical completion? Was that right? Yeah, Yeah. that's it. And there were like four examples. One was the, the GPO had no cover plate. There was one that was the door handle couldn't open. No, the they... door couldn't. There was a, it was a weird way of saying it as well. Basically, you said the door swing wasn't working or something, mm. so you couldn't enter into that space. Didn't say what door it was. Where um, it was, entry or like a bathroom or something. Yeah, and then there were two other ones that were like throwaways that were obviously wrong. So yeah. we, I think we both answered different things. Yeah, you did GPO yeah, and, and I did, did the door. door. And, and the answer and is... The door! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like you have to think like in the exam, what is your mentality when you read this question? Like for me, it was like, okay, a GPO, yes, it's important, it's electricity, whatever, like, you know, someone could touch it and something can happen, but it's something that can be covered quite quickly, whereas, that's just, yeah, well, where, cover plate. yeah, um, whereas a door, because it wasn't specified where it is, it could be an entry door that's not working or that it can't open or there's a fire door or something that's mm. not working. So then it becomes something that will stop the practice of completion from going through. Yeah. So. That was fun. Yeah. Okay. What else? So then, yeah, the school. So the school. Yeah. That's scenario number five now. I'm still eating pizza. Yeah. So I'll do the school. So the school was basically a um, public school renovation. And because it's a public school, remember this, guys, a different set of copyright regulations apply. Mm. <gasps> Under the crown? Is crown. It a crown? Yeah, because it's mm. government, it's a crown. Yeah. yeah. So when it's a crown client, they automatically own all of your copyrights. You, they do not need to license anything, they already own it. That was a question. That was a question. Copyright, start yeah. your copyright stuff. Yeah. So for any other client, any other consultant, you must write into your contract that you license them the copyright to use your design. But when you're working with um, a government client and, um, and it's crown, whatever, crown land or whatever it is, mm. um, they automatically own your copyright. Yeah. Um, so that's a trick, trick question. question. Yeah. Um, there was one about um, building classification. Yes. I can't remember which one it was. But no, that was for the office building. Okay. The BCA one? BCA one. Yeah. yeah. Learn your BCA basics. <laughs> Learn your BCA classes because God knows I do not know anything past yeah. class two. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So you always know your like usual classes, but the question was, it was under that office one as well. Mm. So it went on to say, um, in this, in a, in in the BCA, which one of the classes falls under a public building, or like which one of the classes requires a accessible entry to the building, which would have to be the public building. No. Oh. Yeah. A house doesn't have to be. Oh, sorry, you have no, a stair. No, no house. Yeah. yeah, he passed six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> I did not qualify. Please don't take my registration away. <laughs> yeah, so it was only a public building where, you, where it has to be an accessible entry. Mm. So that was class something. Class five, something. Four? Class four. beep. Yeah, class beep. <laughs> Insert here. Yeah. We can't give away the answers, we'll, we'll, you know? Yeah, we'll double it. Don't worry. Um, um, and then there was something about the, the pit. It was like yes. A, so they, were, they had made a mistake in terms of how the pit was built. Yes. That the water was getting into the pit. Yes. And I can't water. remember what Stinky happened water. afterward. What was the was, question? I don't know. Who's whether it was like, yeah, who's liable, whether it was a defect liability period or something yeah. along those lines. Mm-hmm. So there's a, there's a few questions on defects and liabilities, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, there was one question in the, I think it was the office one as well, where the cladding fell down. Yeah, no, it was they didn't install this cladding properly. Like, yes. who do you contact? Yeah, do you go and hold it up yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no, so do you go on the side and physically hold up the cladding? Or like, so put like the cone things around yeah. it? That was like an option. Yeah, do you stop work? 
do you, is it like serious enough that you have to stop work? Yeah. Um, do you, oh, sorry, you're also administering the contract, so you have to make that decision. Yeah. And then the other option was... You have to, um, to uh, call the specifier or no, the supplier. Yeah. yeah. Call the supplier and ask for help or something like yes. that. Yeah. So it's like how involved do you get into that process, really? So that's so. when there is no, there is no black and white, there is no line in the contract that tells you what to do this is where you have to use your own intelligence yeah. and logic to work out the answer exactly so yeah. no one's spoon feeding you anything this is mm. not your driving exam yeah so a lot of it i mean i don't know i don't know if it's mm. i know it's supposed to be a good test of knowledge this exam but it was, it was i don't know time um, to assess the test yeah to test the test um I don't know if it was a good assessment, really, because the questions were so unclear and you were kind of just guessing a lot of it because yeah. there wasn't enough information. And that's always the case with everything we did in class as well, in PALS. I found that to be the case because, you know, someone would bring up a scenario, but you would have no idea about the 10 other people that were involved. Mm. Everything else has happened before and after, and you're supposed to make a decision about, you know, what's right or wrong. And I think that just, that's not how real life is. Yeah. So it's For hard to... Yeah, when you're working in an office, for every project that has a problem, 10 different people have 10 different answers. Yeah. Exactly. Nothing is ever black and white. Yeah. So I think that's why I think the interview is actually a better assessment tool yeah. compared to the exam. Because the exam, you read all this stuff and you know you obviously learn it and then you have to apply it. But the exam doesn't actually give you enough for you to be able to apply it to anything. Yeah. So. The there was another question I remember as well. Okay. Um, the one with the project manager who oh, was the God. superintendent and the clients on a holiday and then something happens. I can't yeah. remember what happened, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was yeah, about project so, managers or something. So what I remember from it was there was a project, I can't remember what kind of project, and the client had to go on leave and they assigned the responsibility to a project manager from their company. Mm -hmm. And while he was away, he was a cowboy, he decided to make all these changes, send the out design. all these instructions, which resulted in issues and variations. When the client came back from his holiday, he was furious. He didn't want to pay for any of it. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Is he still liable to pay? Do you go after the project manager? What is the process? Who is yeah. liable? What do you do? Yeah, there's a lot of questions that fell under that, but I can't remember what it was I exactly. Remember. I think yeah. we've covered most of it. I can't yeah. remember any, anything else. Um, anything else jumps out at me. Oh, there was one, I can't remember which question it was, but there was one where they were asking you where the DDA regulations comes from in terms of legislation. <gasps> yes. Yeah. It's like in which legislation it requires you to yeah. something in a building. Design something or other. Yeah, and the quest like they had like four different oh, types of Oh, for the lift or the stairs or something? I think it was yeah. requires a lift. Yeah. yeah. Something requires three stories requires a lift. Where does it come from? Yeah. So which like, which like um SEP, not a SEP. Which No, they made um, up random shit. It was like Yeah, DDA something something, yeah. BCA, I don't know, yeah. NCC, whatever. I think it was the NCC at the end, yeah. I remember which there was was the, Yeah, there was yeah. NCC, but what's the answer? What? What was the answer? Where does the, the DDA come Yeah, the from? NCC, we checked it, remember? Okay. So yeah. Guys. We were like, oh my god, let's check this one at least. We can check the NCC. Yeah. Oh, it was very stressful waiting for the results yeah. as well. It was. Yeah. yeah. Not for you. Me? That's I was I okay confident. Anyway. Everyone was okay. So after the exam, oh. let's talk about after the exam. So basically, the best part. it was a resounding, oh my god, what the fuck happened? Yeah, I remember just sitting down and then looking around at everyone. Everyone just like their hands on their head. They're just like, they're, you know, doing these ones. It was so funny. Yeah. But you know what? At we the end of the day, together. yeah. If you fail, everyone fails with you. That's another good thing. Talk about the results with yes. the charts and how it will go up now with the, which, which we think is true in terms of the passing mark. Yes. So it's not a 50 yeah, passing mark. Fine. So what happens is after they you finish the exam, they assess everyone's marks. If the marks are super high, the passing mark will be also lifted. And if everyone did really poorly, then the passing mark will also be reduced. Um, if there are certain questions that everyone got wrong or they assess that um, it was not clear, blah, 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 they will actually eliminate it from the scoring system. So I think we remember we were going through the exams 
And some of the, the question scenarios, we only got um, three out of four, when really it yeah. should be five. But they had actually eliminated one of the questions, yeah. even two of the questions. So Because mm -hmm. they were like, it's unfair probably in terms of how clear it is, or like a lot of people just got it wrong or something. It depends on they how they assess it after. Saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they might sue us for telling you these questions because they don't want people to find out. <laughs> it's too bad. Sorry, AI. We're just, we're just telling our stories, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then afterwards, after the exam, everyone um, was freaking out, you know. Yeah, and then just, we just went and had a beer and kind of, exactly. yeah, ditched yeah. it. But, you know, everyone's yeah. in the same boat. We all passed at the end of the day. Our passing mark was 60. 57? Was it 57? Or 60, 61? Oh, 60. Something around there. Yeah. Yeah. We were not great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, we both passed, but we do have friends that didn't pass. So, you know, mm. unfortunately, not everyone does. Yeah. Um, so, don't give up. Just go again, try again, study. And, you know, second time's the charm or even the third. Yes. Um, any final remarks? Good luck, charms, final tips? Uh, obviously, good luck to everyone mm. sitting the exam. Um, in terms of any other tips, just just read anything that you can, and just yeah. try and understand everything you're reading. Don't just read it for the sake of highlighting. Yeah. Make sure, especially if you have someone who's also sitting the exam, talk to each other in those final days. Yeah, force you them to drive to. an hour to go to the library every day. Yes. <laughs> but yes, do not. And that's why you pass. <laughs> do not stop studying. Like honestly. Yeah. Just it, be like, this is it. Like, I have to put everything yeah. I have. This is the past six years of uni, two years of working, all coming together to just like. She I did just this really quickly, it. just so you yeah. know. <laughs> she came out of the womb and was like, I'm going to be an architect yeah, exactly. in the fastest way possible. It's been six years. <laughs> I'm actually eight. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, just don't stop studying. You only have to do this once in your life. It's yeah. literally like you do this once. You, you don't need to go out on the weekend. Just you don't need to have there. a life. You're an architect. You don't have one anyway. Exactly. <laughs> you have no friends, so yeah, don't pretend like you do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go yeah. to each other anyway. Your so. friends will not miss you for a week. It's fine. Yeah. And then afterwards, you can celebrate and you know go and have all the parties and drinks in the world because have pizza. Have pizza, and then worry about the the um, interview. <laughs> In our next video. In our next video, where we'll... Are we going to eat pizza or are we going to have something better? Okay. We'll see. Anyway, goodbye. Good luck. Good luck.